fun. Hi team, thanks for waiting. We have our brief break and now we are back. In the first hour of this episode, there's lots of drama, lots of relationships, lots of chatting, and uh, Kess and Kellen have agreed that it's time that Kellen takes Kess's concern seriously. Kellen's gonna ask Olivia for the ring, the magic ring, to see what they can find out about it. And also ask her advice for something. Mm -hmm. All right, and in the meantime, uh, Guy Claypool has taken Olivia out. They're headed out on the town to have a little bit of a chat. So Olivia and Ransom, or not Ransom, uh, Guy kind of slightly arms around each other, walk out of the tavern into the streets of Bridge Light. And Guy Claypool says, uh, so like, Olivia, I know, um, what's his name, trusts you and like really thinks highly of you and everything. So like, I thought you might be a good person to ask this like question about. So trust me, Calval. Uh, no, like Kellen, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah of course, yeah. He's yeah. Not lame though. Oh, you know, it's some brain fart, you know, like yeah. sometimes the words that you seek just like don't come to mind and you just gotta like improvise. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. So, like, first off, this is kind of awkward. And I, I like need your trust and privacy with this issue. So like, I want to talk to you about this, but can like, we just keep this between the two of us and like of not tell course. anyone else about it? Yeah, of course, as your band manager, I feel that we have like a clause of confidence. So you just roll with it. You just say like yeah. a clause of C, man, it's cool. Yeah, we have a clause of C, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna lay it out for you straight. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. A little while ago, mm -hmm. I uh, met this girl. Ooh, I like yeah. this girl already. Mm -hmm. Keep it was kind of complicated. You know, I kind of like have these feelings for this girl, I think maybe. I mean, like, I, I, I might be, I'm thinking I am, mm -hmm. but I can't, I can't quite tell because it's complicated. Like. Because she's, she's got feelings for a friend of mine. Oh, that sucks. Are you sure she has feelings for that friend? Yeah, they're going out. Or kind of have been off and on going out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get what you mean. Um, that kind of couple, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, they're, they're, they're ostensibly yeah. together. Or whatever. But like, every time I look at her, my heart starts making some weird beating things. Like it does, it does, I feel all like, I got like worms in my belly. And- Worms? Yeah, I feel like there's like a, a whole pit of worms crawling around in my stomach. And- Be careful about that. That sounds like dangerous. Worms. Yeah. But, and that's the thing, like, you know, I. Like, I, I got a big heart. I like a lot of things, and I got a lot of love to give, but... Of course you have a big heart. Everyone can see that. But, like, I've never gotten worms in my stomach over a girl before. So, like, it's... So what do I do? Is she cooking you weird food? No. No, no? she's never made me any food ever. So it's not, like... Actual worms. No, no, but you know, like you, you see <laughs> someone. Is so thorough. <laughs> no, it's not actual worms. Okay, so it's like fluffy worms. I don't know, man. They're not fluffy feeling. They're not fluffy feeling. Are no, it feels like my my insides are like twisting together, and you know, it, it it's a mess. And I, I think it's love liking her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But maybe it's not. Like maybe the worms in my stomach mean I really dislike her. <sighs> That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Has she shown any signs of affection towards you? Uh. Or like, or like you know, like opening uh... a door, if you know what I mean. You know, like she'll 
say something or, or do something and I'll totally think it means something. And then like later when I'm alone at night and I'm thinking about it and like staying up sleepless over it, I wonder if like maybe she just does that. And that's like, that's the way she would treat a normal person. But like, I'm thinking of it differently cause I'm thinking about her so much. And like, maybe I'm overanalyzing and it doesn't really mean anything at the time I thought it did. So does it mean something? You know what? You should stop trying to overanalyze thing and like just live in the moment. Like, you know, like next time you feel the time is right, just let your emotions run free. You but know? like, like passion he's... is so strong in life. It's like the most meaningful thing ever. You know, like, like Reluna says, just go for it. Just do it. <laughs> Dude, Luna is a wise goddess, man. Luna actually coincidentally made up the Nike slogan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like the problem is she's kind of with my friend, you know, and I wouldn't ever want to hurt him because he's like a really cool dude and we've known each other for a while now and I, I wouldn't want to like... You're right, you're right, you're right. No, I get your problem, I get your problem. That's tough. So what do I do, band manager? Do you think you should talk to him about this? Like, how oh. close are you guys? Like, is it like your best friend level? Or is it like the common folk? Well, I'm... Do you care about your relationship with him? Of course. Like, all relationships are sacred. You know? Like, is he more passionate about that relationship than you are about it? Huh? Oh, is he more passionate about her than I am? Yeah. Dude, I don't even know what I feel. But they're pretty... Yeah, I mean, they're, they're pretty happy together, it seems. But, like, I think that... God, like... You know, he's into her and she's into him. But then like, sometimes I totally think she's into me too. Like, you know, we had this one moment and I just haven't been able to stop thinking about her ever since. Yeah. Like we, we shared something. Like, yeah, it's just like, keep going along. And if you feel the time is right, just go for it. You know, like sometimes when Reluna sends you a message, you just have to follow your heart. All right. So like you have to find that special moment where all the stars align. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. I should just like hold my tongue and like bide my time. You should you should like put your thoughts on paper and like write a song about it. Oh, you are so wise. Yeah, and that's good for the band, too. <laughs> I should write a song about it. Yeah. And we need to oh, find, yeah. like, a name to her band, too. That's, like, really important. A name for my band? Uh-huh. Well, I mean, Bash has really been kind of hoping to join up with you guys. And, like, I'm not ready there. I, like, I, I need to find my, you know, find myself before I can do anything like that. So I think kind of like Bash and I are just jamming now. I don't think we're much of a band anymore. Really? I know he's been feeling kind of left out. Like he's been wanting to play more gigs while I'm like wanting to find myself. Like, and I kind of feel like Bash and I are like, like going, like we've been doing this for a long time, uh -huh. but now I kind of feel like we're doing this. But I feel like we, like, we could have booked you some gigs together and stuff. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with a solo artist on my hands. I've never dealt with like two solo artists, actually. Well, well here, here. Why don't. Like a lot of expansion for a band manager going from like one band to like a band then two solo artists. Right. Well, I mean, I think Bash wants to like join Kess and Kellen. Mm -hmm. So, like, maybe you could put in a word with them at some point. It doesn't have to, like, you don't have to change it to like Kess and Kellen and Bash. But, like, at least, you know, maybe you could ask the others if they need, like, a percussionist for, like, a couple of songs here or there. And, like, maybe Bash to, like, you know, be worked in as a, a guest sometimes. And then maybe if that goes well, then, like, he could be more than a guest. But, but, but that's separate. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. So why don't I play you a little something right now. 
and then like if you think it's good then like i'll we'll, we'll try and like get a couple of gigs but if you still think i need work okay. then like yeah, sounds good. okay all right so i'm gonna play you my favorite love song okay Ooh, is it for the girl well i, got, I haven't written that one yet oh, okay, okay. i wouldn't want to use her name anyway i'd need to like give fake names so she doesn't know I'm singing about her when she's uh, around. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. Okay. So he gets like, he positions you kind of seated on a, a fence and gets down on like one knee. He doesn't have his instrument with him, but he's like pr playing along as if he was playing one of his instruments. And he starts singing this love song yeah. towards you. And I think this is around the time where Kellen shows up. Yeah. So I have like my two legs like dangling from the, from the fence and I'm mm -hmm. like, Ah, go ahead, play All right. So Guy Claypool's down on like one knee, sort of like singing this love song to you while uh, Kellen shows up. I just, uh, like I'm coming up behind him, right? Mm-hmm. I just... Yeah, definitely. I don't interrupt at all. I just silently stand there and listen. All right, he rolls a natural, well, he rolls a 30 on what? his uh, musicianship check. Damn. Uh, and it is, you know, with that, when he's not playing an instrument, when he's just singing, you know, he's got, he can hit the right notes. At least you know, he can hit notes close enough that they're fine. Um, and you can really feel the, the passion flowing from him to you. And then I go, oh my God, I must stop you there. You're totally underestimating yourself. You can totally, like, either be a solo act or, like, Join for us with Guy. Like, Guy would be lucky to have you. Like, you're a great artist. Really? You mean yeah. it? I walk up right at that moment behind him and put my hand on his shoulder. I'm like, yeah, man, you really are a great artist. Oh, Kellen, I didn't, he stands up. I didn't see you there, man. Uh, hey. Wasn't that great, Kellen? Like, yeah, it was. I... It was really legit great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, don't you see him with Guy, like, forming this awesome duo? I am Guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. She gets confused. You know? No, man. You, like, I understand. You just got to use the words that come to your heart, whatever it means. That's so true, man. You always just know. You know what to say, you know? Uh, I, uh, sometimes you just got to go with the C. Uh... Olivia, th thank you for helping me sort out my problem. Um, and he goes over and gives you a hug and a, a kiss right on the cheek. No problem. I'm there for you guys. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, Kellen, what, what brings you over here, man? Like, I thought you and Cass were talking. Did you did you talk with Cass? Did, did Cass and you talk? Yeah, we totally talked. We're done talking. Now we have a plan of action. Excellent. Babe. Mm -hmm. Olivia, my babe, babe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we need that ring. Oh, yeah, I needed to go get it, actually. I left it, like... You okay. guys are chain exchanging rings? No, it's the ring I found, like, when we did the thing. Oh, right. Well, I should go get back to, to Bash. I'll uh, see you guys later. Yeah, okay. you should tell him about, like... How I see you guys is like a full on. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll totally, totally. I'll, I'll, I'll be right. I'll be back later. Okay. He says as bye. he runs off. Bye, bye, bye. What about bashing clay? <laughs> <laughs> Babe, that's such an original name. You're so smart. Okay, let's go get that ring and take it to Olivia. And also, I was supposed to ask you something else, but I'm kind of tipsy, so I kind of forgot. I don't know. Oh, you, you've been. Oh, you've been in getting in the mood. I see what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, kind of like, going like too close to her face, like, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not quite there. I'm not quite there yet, but you know. There's you still know? time, babe. Uh -huh. Let's go. I take her hand and like frolic with her back toward the bar. You guys frolic back to the bar where the whole party reconvenes. And then I get a beer. Right. All right, so the whole party's gathered around. <laughs> the whole party is gathered around. Yeah. Uh, and when you're all suddenly reminded that, oh, shit, we still have to compose an original piece for the bridge lighting ceremony. <gasps> There's so many things to do. 
Yeah, but we need that ring, because Kess's interests are important. If I'm any kind of brother, it's the kind... Ah, oh, yeah, the ring, the ring. Yeah. Babe, here, take this beer. You can take this beer with you. Go find the ring and come back here. I'll just write a song. Okay. I'll just write a song right now. Yeah, like right on the spot. But babe, give me a prompt. What is the song about? Um, hmm. For the bridge lighting ceremony. Yeah. Well, like, maybe like a metaphor about like, you know, light in this world. Oh, yeah, like, totally. What it means. You or something? Light in the world. Yes, totally. That's exactly it. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna write it right now. I'm so ready. Go find the ring, babe. Okay. Then, Neil, I'm gonna go get the ring. All right. You can find the ring, no problem. Yeah, it's right next. It's right under a tree, which I noted. Can't, can't escape me, Neil. Cool. You find it. Yeah. When come back. Got no ring. Uh, Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. So, uh, the party gathered together. You've got the ring. Um, Kess and Kellen, are you writing the song together, or is Kellen just writing the song? I, as soon as I got that prompt from Olivia, I go tell Kess the prompt. I'm like, let's let's brainstorm, let's brainstorm. What about the light? What about the light is it that, you know, in the world? What does the light need to be in the world? What is the light? The light would be our future. <gasps> future. Oh my gosh, you're so right. The light is our future. That's exactly it. Okay, yeah. But it's like what we, it's where we strive to go every day. Yeah. Yeah. And who goes with us? The people we love. Yeah, I'm writing all this down. Unfortunately, that means while we fight for the light, Doc also starts to try to get us. And in the dark are our enemies. Mm-hmm. That's so true. And our enemies are like, they're like an animal or like a mythical creature. Like what kind of creature? Are they like a, they're like a... I don't know. Like right a... now, I would say it's a dark sorceress. Dark sorceress. Oh my gosh. It's evil magic. Magic that takes us from our dreams. It Literally. takes it takes our dreams. It actually takes them. Yes. Yeah. But like this is supposed to be a happy song. So like when we light we light the bridge, you know, that's where we like the bridge is where we find our way from nightmares to dreams, right? Yeah, and we we leave the nightmares behind. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, this is beautiful. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I'm feeling like, I mean, this is risky. This is risky, but like, what do you think about presenting a spoken word song? Like me? No, 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 like us, oh. together, at Bridgelight. Oh, okay. Like, not doing, like, the typical, like, da-da-da, you know, we're singing a song about Len Darker. We could do a spoken word. I think that would be fun. I think, do you think they'd like definite. it? I think they'd like anything we do now. Okay. I think this is definitely a spoken word. Do you have your ocarina ready? Do you have a trill in mind? Um... I'm sure it's around here somewhere. <laughs> oh. It's such a mess these days. I, I'll, I'll have to go back to the room to look for it. Yeah, that's fine. I just want to make sure you have something in mind, you know, like a hook, a sexy hook, you know. Okay. Yeah. I'll think of something. Yeah, this is like almost done. I'm. This is going to be a banger. <laughs> I think it's going to be awesome. Okay. Oh, here's that ring. Olivia brought it. Look. Oh, perfect. Is there a magic user in town? Well, Did Olivia is a magic user, and so are the two of you. You guys actually have access to all your spells now, including your new spells. But is there a magic, like an experienced magic user in mm. town? Yeah, there's probably an experienced magic user in town. Okay. Definitely. I search for, I ask around for that. Um... Okay, so there, there's the, the, oops, 
the sorceress that functions as Kel Bell's uh, chief advisor. Um, but she is off with Kel Bell in the Wrathwood right now with Ransom and the others hunting down some orcs. So she's not here yet. Uh, there's also another magic user that owns a shop in town that like sells all sorts of little magical things to various people. Most of them probably wizards and clerics that don't want to be known or that are traveling through or something. Um, so there's a magic shop in town that you can visit. Um, and it is run by a gentleman. Okay. Um, yeah. I start there then. I go to the magic shop in town. Is the whole party together? Um, Kellen, are you coming with? Uh, I look at Olivia. Should we go with her, or did you want to just have, like, another beer? Uh, I mean, I know you like magic shops, babe. Can we do, like, both at the same time? Oh my gosh, you're so right. There's no laws about open containers here. Let's take these and go! (laughs) All right, the two of you join with them. D, Guy, and Bash have all disappeared. Probably off hanging out and practicing. Uh, and you guys head to this magic shop. I enter the shop. Hello, excuse me. Uh, all right. The shop is titled, uh, Wallace's Whimsical Wares. So I just kind of enter in, and then Mm -hmm. I go inside and I go, is it like, is he at the front desk? He is. Okay. Uh, Wallace. All right. Uh, Excuse oh me, sir. Can I bother you? Why, well, absolutely. Uh, well, you see, I found this ring, and it happened to be when the person took it off, um, they aged. And I was wondering if you could tell me where this ring might be from. They did something very crazy. And then I hand him the ring. He takes a look at the ring and immediately stops and sets it down on the table very carefully and looks at you. <clears throat> I've seen this ring before. Wow. On the finger of a certain noble who lives in town. Oh, really? Who? Lady B. Lady B? Yes. Is she a known magic user? No, but I have seen this ring on her finger before. Okay. I have wondered how she came across it, but it is uh, none of my business where people get their things other than maybe right now when, did she sell this to you? No, so, and I explained to him the whole story of the night. He nods slowly the entire Can time. I say oh. that I just found the ring in like a flower pot. Um, then how you just found it in a flower pot? Yeah, the castle. Because I was trying to detect the magic, you know, because like I, I thought a charm was going on. We're not and going then... that route. If she didn't find it in a flower pot, she found it yeah. on the body. No, and I found, no, I found it in a flower pot. I did see the woman with the ring earlier that night. Like, let me tell you the story. I saw the lady with the ring earlier that night, and she looked really young and sweet. And then, after all the commotion, I found the ring, which I did scout ahead of time with the text magic, in the flower pot. And then I was trying to find the nice young lady. I never found her in the crowd. And that's how we got to. But she said that she turned, she aged. Well, that's my theory, because I never found her again. Kellen's like, looking between Kess and <laughs> Olivia, like... This completely. isn't the time to tell stories. We need to find what really happened. Uh, yeah, too. Okay, ladies, ladies. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you what. I can identify this ring for you. Okay. It's not necessarily a cheap process. The ingredients are expensive and it takes a full day of my time and then completely drains me and incapacitates me for another day on top of that. It's very unpleasant. How so much? it's kind of an expensive process. Uh, it's 400 gold. Um, 
It's expensive. Kellen grabs the ring and puts it on. Um, okay. Uh, Wallace, as he sees you starting to put it on, goes, no, don't do it! But it's too late. You put the ring on. Kellen puts it on in that drunken way where you're like, this makes sense. Yeah. Nothing happens. Why did you say not to do it, then? You just shouldn't be putting on random magic rings. Like, you never know what's going to happen. It's super, it, it could have killed you. Why? Why would anyone magic. make a magic ring that kills you? Maybe someone makes a ring, but it tunes it to them. So if anyone other than them wears it, it does something bad. That sounds not good. I yeah, it's super no. dangerous. You should take that off. There's no way I can afford 400 gold. So could you do it for less? He shakes his head. I can't. The other aspect of this is um, clearly you've taken it from a person who it belongs to. So you kind of need to return it or I'm obligated to go to the police. We can go check it up with her. That way we don't have to pay. We are investigating because this person caused major problems. It sounds to me like the story that she was saying is that she was just a party member. Yeah, she was just a party member. You're like, it's kind of in your head. Like, you know, she's kind of making up the story that I stole it. And now she's thinking that, like, the young slash maybe old lady did it, but I don't see any correlation, to be honest. I just see a magic ring that got lost in the commotion and that's trying to find its way home. I look uh, I'm happy to stay out of the politics of these things, but, but if you don't return it, and then it finally comes out later that you have it and then I didn't report that it was stolen, I'm going to be sitting in jail. So I need you guys to return that. How do we know it's hers, though? Because it was on her finger. So, like, the young lady that had the ring? She would have reported it missing if it was her ring. Okay, well, if you're comfortable, I'm still going to have to go to the police with this. Look, let's just take it to the lady. Where does she live? Lady B? She has a mansion on the south side of town. Uh, you'll recognize it by the ivory tower that extends from the center of it towards the sky. <laughs> ivory tower. It's like a metaphor. It's like, what? It's like I'm way up there. It's like an ivory tower. Wow. Uh, you know? Right. Yeah. Maybe you should step outside before you break something, sir. Okay. I guess we're heading off to Lady B's mansion. Okay. Come on, babe. Let's go. All right. The three of you head down to Lady B's mansion. You find it on the south side of town. It's got the ivory tower that uh, sticks out of the top of the building. The mansion is large. It's mansiony. Um, there's a lot of. Uh, there's a big wall that goes around it with beautiful gardens on the inside. You can see fruit trees and all sorts of beautiful things. And if you like pop up and peek over the wall, you can even see that there's an artificial creek that runs through the town that ends in like this big um, like fish pond that has turtles in it and fish. Mm-hmm. So and there's yes. No, I was gonna do like more small talk. Oh no! So there's a a uh, footman. Like a servant on the gate. A man gate. made of feet. <laughs> a servant at the gate who sees you guys coming around and maybe loitering outside the wall. Hello, footman. Greetings, sir. I salute him. We've he come to see on. Lady B. In a matter mm. of great importance. And what is this matter? I plan to propose to her with this ring. Just kidding, I'm not. It's her ring. (laughs) We're just returning it. We're not sure if it's her ring. His eyes go wide when you say you're returning it. Uh, Do you have a missing ring of hers? Maybe. That's the theory of the magical alchemist. May I see it? No. No, we need to speak to her. 
We need well, to make sure it's really hers, you know? I think she would be very happy to have her stolen ring returned. You um, may be afoot, but you're a smart man. <laughs> he opens the gate, leads you guys in, passes, uh, sets you guys down in a parlor on the bottom floor, and disappears for a little while. You guys have a few minutes to yourself if there's anything you want to say before she shows up. I'm just staring at uh, Olivia, and I'm kind of, like, swaying a little bit, and I'm like... Can we please just stick to the story of the flower pots? Baby, like... you're so pretty when you talk. Your lips move so pretty. Isn't she not, pretty, Kaz? But then she's not going to admit that she turned aged. Well, like, I mean, we had the ring, everything was fine, and then you had to go and, like, tell that guy that, like, I picked it off her finger, like, from a lord, a lady, or what? I was trying to tell the story, so maybe you could tell us what magic she was using. Okay. You know, I just want to get I'm to the bottom of this. Too, like, I could have gotten to the bottom of it without involving... Well, how, why haven't you yet then? The well, door well, to the room opens. Kellen's, like, looking between them, like... <laughs> um, in walks... In through the room walks a woman covered... Well, a person covered head to toe in dark fabric. It looks like mourner's wear. She's got, like, a, a big shawl that runs all the way down to her feet, a uh, hood up with a veil covering her face completely. Uh, uh, Lady B? The figure nods. Mm -hmm. Do I recognize the young lady that I saw? Well, you can't see any details of her whatsoever. Uh, oh. with all due respect, your ladyship, it's hard to tell whether we might be speaking to an imposter on a sensitive matter if we can't verify your identity. This is my home. You have come to it. I would be quite the imposter to have why, already why been Why are you hiding this your face? This is my house, and I am not accustomed to answering questions from strangers. I have been led to believe you have my stolen ring? Let me guess. You look a little older than normal. How did you come to have this and find out it was mine? What involvement... Do you have with said ring? If it is indeed my ring, my involvement is that I am the owner of it. Why do you have a magical ring? Have you come into my house to ask me questions in that tone? Look, Lady B. That's I, very rude, Lady foreigner. Lady B, I'm so sorry, but we're we're a little out of sorts because there has been great Are danger. Are you drunk? No, 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 but there has been great danger, and my sister here, kind soul that she is, just wants to make sure that she protects the town, and she believes there may be a connection between this magic ring and the party. Do you remember the party? The party was weird, right? Which party are you referring to? You went to a party. The wedding party, right? Calbell's Ball? Yes. I don't remember seeing you there. Were you attending? I was a guest. Mm -hmm. What can you... I just... Like, what were you wearing? <laughs> As I have said, I am not accustomed to answering questions from strangers in my own home. If you are here to level accusations, you may leave. No, I'm just trying to find the rightful owner of this ring, and I remember whom I saw wearing it earlier that night, and I'm trying to find out if that was you. The masked figure stands silently. Well, can you describe it? How about that? No, that's She gives not. you an accurate description of the ring. Is the ring, like, intricate enough that it makes sense, like, her description? Yes. Definitely. Well, oh. it does sound like it's yours. So you were the young lady that was wearing the ring? Or did you, like, lend it to someone? How did you come to know, how did you come to find this ring? I found it in a flower pot. 
I saw a sour like, pot. Early, yeah, like earlier that night, you remember, like, do you remember the band, Kiss and Kellen? Don't you remember them? Like, they started playing the music. Yes, there was a band, a duo playing <laughs> music on the balcony. Yeah, they started playing. I was with them. And then I felt something strange happening in the room. And as a wizard, well, as a cleric, I thought that it would be, you know, like a good idea to detect magic and detect charm and stuff like that. And that's when I noticed the ring on this young lady's finger alongside other items such as, you know, like the magic sword of Kala, blah, 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 and whatnot. But I did not detect any charm or anything weird, so I just thought, ah, you know, I'll just keep going with the night and stuff like that. And then, later on, there was, like, all this commotion, this craziness, the orcs and stuff. And I just saw, like, the ring lost in this flower pot later on, and I couldn't find the young lady that had it. So I just kept it with me until now, until I learned it was yours. That's why I'm thinking, mm. like, are you the young lady? Or did you let the it? The masked. The masked female comes and stands really close to Kellen, like, you know, inches apart from Kellen. You can even feel, you can see the, the, the veil blowing with her breath. Uh, and then she goes over and stands equally close to Kess. I hmm. look at her in the eyes. I suppose you are the artist. Well, where is my ring? Well, you need to show us your face if we are to know that you are the, indeed the owner. You have come to this house seeking me for this ring? I presume you are... Yeah, because we know what she looks like. Is that you? Do you look like the lady that was wearing this ring? She slowly and carefully uh, pulls her hands out, revealing very wrinkled, tired old hands, and pulls back the veil, revealing a very aged woman. Does she look like the young version or the old version that I saw? She looks like the old version, definitely. Hmm. Same person. How, how is this happening? Give how? me my ring. I take out the ring and give it to her. Put it she on her puts finger. it on her finger herself and immediately turns young. Oh, that was you! <laughs> Where, I how did this ring? <sighs> and with a heavy sigh, she takes off her big, heavy cloak, uh, revealing normal, you know, fancy clothes underneath oh, um, that you. fit her well. Mm -hmm. Ah, I was worried. Uh, I she calls for a servant who takes away the, the dark, drab looking things. Uh, and goes to stand in front of a mirror while listening to you, uh, inspecting herself in it. Mm -hmm. Well, that ring does do wonders. Thank you. No problem. I just wanted to make sure you know that we would find its rightful owner, and all I remembered was, like, let's be honest, like your beautiful face. She heads over to uh, heads back out the door to the to the main hallway and comes back uh, half a second later with a with two bags in her hand. Uh, they look like coin purses. She hands the first one over to you, Olivia. This is for recovering my ring. Ah, thank you so much. I didn't even know you were looking for it, but I figured it's magical. So. Mm -hmm. And this, she says, holding up another one, is for your silence on your visit to my household today. I trust you will speak of what you saw to no one. I think that could be arranged if you wouldn't mind telling us what you remember about the wedding. Hmm. There was music. There was dancing, mm -hmm. there was food, and a delicate, strange wine that I had never had before. Uh, foreign, it must have been. I've been drinking a great many wines for a great many years. I feel like I know them all. I can pinpoint a vineyard just by the taste. Uh, but this was unlike any I had had before. Mm -hmm. um, a sweetness to it that was unusual. Neil, did we eat that food or drink that wine? You guys had some food brought to you, but you were just drinking water. Mm. That sounds like a key. It must be the wine, then. 
how did you get this ring? Like, I don't ask it in an accusatory tone, but I ask it in a very inquisitive tone. A suitor once approached me, offering me um, eternal youth if I were to wed him. Did you wed him? Yes. Why is he? Unfortunately, he keeled over one day. Heart attack. Poor soul. That was 30 years later. So does that ring only work on you then? No. It works on anybody. But does it like give you good health too? Like are you instantly young? Like your body inside is young too? She gives you a twirl on the floor. I am no sorcerer. I only know what I see. But it doesn't make sense how you would have eternal youth, but then a husband would keel over? Wait, did he not have the same type? She shakes her head. No, he gave me his ring and he continued to age. Oh. That's true love right there. Wow. You only come across it once in a lifetime. So you've never used magic outside of that ring? She shakes her head. No, no. I am... I don't like to get my hands dirty. Hmm. Now, she presents the other bag to Olivia. This would be useful. Like, let's say you're a human and you're in a relationship with an elf, and then you start aging and the elf doesn't age, and then you die, like, old and decrepit. I would kind of need that. Do you know where he got the ring from? She shakes her head. Old family heirloom, he said. And do you remember anything after you had that wine? Well, you know how a good party goes. It all seems to blend together, and then you wake up on the floor the next day. Hmm. Unfortunately, I woke up in a state of disarray unlike ever before. Exposed to the whole world. And nobody else knows that you have this ring. There are a few, and I would like to keep that number as low as possible. So I trust your discretion. Do you think that someone would have had, like, a motive to, like, expose you? Because, like, since I found that ring in the flower pot, like, do you think someone would have wanted to expose you? I have many political enemies. Why? Do you really care? Yes. How involved do you want to become in my business? I'm not really trying to become involved in someone's business, but there's some strange happenings, and I want to make sure to put a stop to them. Like, do you, you don't want to end up like that again, do you? Hmm. It's the first time it's happened in 85 years. Wait, what do you mean the first time it's happened in 85 years? So this has happened before? No, I'm telling you I'm 85 years old. Oh. Elven one. We humans do not live quite that long. Okay. Well, I mean, without ring, I have no idea how old you truly are. I believe it's 85. Will you never die with this ring? Like of old age? Come find me in 20 years and we'll find out. Do you ever take it off? <laughs> Would you? I would not. No, of course not. (laughs) I chuckle. Now, if you don't mind, I have uh, things to attend to. I have a social presence that must be maintained that has been lost for a few days now. People are beginning to ask questions. Nobody ever asks questions that you don't age? Mm. I have my ways. And my charms. So, uh, I think you all have plenty of other things to get to. I appreciate your returning this to me and your discretion on the matter. If we have any questions in the future, would it be okay to come back and ask you? As long as you are not accusing me of something. No. Of course. As long as I know you weren't involved in it. Sorry. It's very, very fishy, everything that's been going on. Hmm. I hear Kel Bell is out slaying the orcs right now. Mm. The matter should be put to rest shortly. You'd think so, but I don't think 
Mm. Mm. Yeah. Good day, ladies good day. and gentlemen. Bye. Drunk gentlemen. I. <laughs> How much gold meal? Uh, the first bag contains 400 gold. The second bag contains 200 gold. Wait, how much and how much? 400 and 200. So, Woo! I, my character, at least for now, until anyone talks about it, she's taking the 400 that she got, and she's not, like, asking anything, so I'll just add it to my character. <laughs> Except for when I get outside, I ask for my harsh. I ask for portion. Okay. You want to sit down and start counting everything right now, outside, in the open? No, I mean, when the time comes, we separate it out, like we do everything. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. So, uh, that has been our next segment. Why don't we take our break here, and when we come back, you guys can do the bridge lighting ceremony, uh, give your spoken word piece, and we'll see what happens. Sounds good. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Bye. <laughs> 